File 17. One day, a little while after this, Satan appeared again. We were always watching out for him, for life was never very stagnant when he was by. He came upon us at that place in the woods where we had first met him. Being boys, we wanted to be entertained, and we asked him to do a show for us. Very well, he said. Would you like to see a history of the progress of the human race, its development of that product which it calls civilization? We said we should. So, with a thought, he turned the place into the Garden of Eden, and we saw Abel praying by his altar. Then Cain came walking toward him with his club, and did not seem to see us, and would have stepped on my foot if I had not drawn it in. He spoke to his brother in a language which we did not understand. Then he grew violent and threatening, and we knew what was going to happen, and turned away our heads for the moment. But we heard the crash of the blows, and heard the shrieks and the groans. And then there was silence, and we saw Abel lying in his blood, and gasping out his life, and Cain standing over him, and looking down at him, vengeful and unrepentant. Then the vision vanished, and was followed by a long series of unknown wars, murders, and massacres. Next we had the flood, and the ark tossing around in the stormy waters, with lofty mountains in the distance, showing veiled and dim through the rain. Satan said, The progress of your race was not satisfactory. It is to have another chance now. The scene changed, and we saw Noah overcome with wine. Next we had Sodom and Gomorrah, and the attempt to discover two or three respectable persons there, as Satan described it. Next Lot and his daughters in the cave. Next came the Hebraic wars, and we saw the victors massacre the survivors and their cattle, and save the young girls alive, and distribute them around. Next we had Jael, and saw her slip into the tent, and drive the nail into the temple of her sleeping guest. And we were so close, that when the blood gushed, and it trickled in a little red stream to our feet, we could have stained our hands in it if we'd wanted to. Next we had Egyptian wars, Greek wars, Roman wars, hideous drenchings of the earth with blood, and we saw the treacheries of the Romans towards the Carthaginians, and the sickening spectacle of the massacre of those brave people. Also we saw Caesar invade Britain. Not that those barbarians had done him any harm, but because he wanted their land and desired to confer the blessings of civilization upon their widows and orphans, as Satan explained. Next, Christianity was born. Then ages of Europe passed in review before us, and we saw Christianity and civilization march hand in hand through those ages, leaving famine and death and desolation in their wake, and other signs of the progress of the human race, as Satan observed. And always we had wars, and more wars, and still other wars, all over Europe, all over the world. Sometimes in the private interest of royal families, Satan said, sometimes to crush a weak nation, but never a war started by the aggressor for any clean purpose. There is no such war in the history of the race. Now, said Satan, you have seen your progress down to the present, 
"'And you must confess it is wonderful in its way. "'We must now exhibit the future.' He showed us slaughters more terrible in their destruction of life, more devastating in their engines of war, than any we had seen. "'You perceive,' he said, "'that you have made continual progress. Cain did his murder with a club. The Hebrews did their murders with javelins and swords.' The Greeks and Romans added protective armor and the fine arts of military organization and generalship. The Christian has added guns and gunpowder. A few centuries from now, he will have so greatly improved the deadly effectiveness of his weapons of slaughter that all men will confess that without Christian civilization— War must have remained a poor and trifling thing to the end of time. Then he began to laugh in the most unfeeling way, and make fun of the human race, although he knew that what he had been saying shamed us and wounded us. No one but an angel could have acted so, but suffering is nothing to them. They do not know what it is, except by hearsay. More than once, Seppi and I had tried in a humble and diffident way to convert him, and as he had remained silent, we had taken his silence as a sort of encouragement. Necessarily, then, this talk of his was a disappointment to us, for it showed that we had made no deep impression upon him. The thought made us sad, and we knew then how the missionary must feel when he has been cherishing a glad hope, and has seen it blighted. We kept our grief to ourselves, knowing that this was not the time to continue our work. Satan laughed his unkind laugh to a finish, and then he said, "'It is remarkable progress. In five or six thousand years, five or six high civilizations have risen— flourished, commanded the wonder of the world, then faded out and disappeared, and not one of them except the latest ever invented any sweeping and adequate way to kill people. They all did their best, to kill being the chiefest ambition of the human race, and the earliest incident in its history. But only the Christian civilization has scored a triumph to be proud of. Two or three centuries from now, it will be recognized that all the competent killers are Christians. Then the pagan world will go to school to the Christian, not to acquire his religion, but his guns. The Turk and the Chinaman will buy those to kill missionaries and converts with. By this time his theatre was at work again, and before our eyes nation after nation drifted by, during two or three centuries, a mighty procession, an endless procession, raging, struggling, wallowing through seas of blood, smothered in battle-smoke through which the flags glinted, and the red jets from the cannon darted, and always we heard the thunder of the guns and the cries of the dying. "'And what does it amount to?' said Satan, with his evil chuckle. "'Nothing at all. You gain nothing. You always come out where you went in. For a million years the race has gone on monotonously propagating itself and monotonously re-performing this Dull nonsense. To what end? No wisdom can guess. Who gets a profit out of it? Hmm? Nobody. Nobody but a parcel of usurping little monarchs and nobilities who despise you, would feel defiled if you touched them, would shut the door in your face if you proposed to call, whom you slave for, fight for, die for and are not ashamed of it, but proud, 
whose existence is a perpetual insult to you, and you are afraid to resent it, who are mendicants supported by your arms, yet assume toward you the airs of benefactor towards beggar, who address you in the language of master to slave, and are answered in the language of slave to master, who are worshipped by you with your mouth, while in your heart, if you have one, you despise yourselves for it. The first man was a hypocrite and a coward, qualities which have not yet failed in his line. It is the foundation upon which all civilizations have been built. Drink to their perpetuation, drink to their augmentation, drink to— Then he saw by our faces how much we were hurt, and he cut his sentence short and stopped chuckling, and his manner changed. He said gently, No, no, we will drink one another's health, and let civilization go. The wine which has flown to our hands out of space by desire is earthly, good enough for that other toast. But throw away the glasses. We will drink this one in wine which has not visited this world before. We obeyed, and reached up and received the new cups as they descended. They were shapely and beautiful goblets, but they were not made of any material that we were acquainted with. They seemed to be in motion. They seemed to be alive and certainly the colours in them were in motion. They were very brilliant and sparkling, and of every tint, and they were never still, but flowed to and fro in rich tides, which met and broke and flashed out dainty explosions of enchanting colour. I think it was most like opals washing about in waves and flashing out their splendid fires. But there is nothing to compare the wine with. We drank it and felt a strange and witching ecstasy as of heaven go stealing through us. And Seppi's eyes filled, and he said worshippingly, We shall be there some day, and then... He glanced furtively at Satan, and I think he hoped Satan would say, Yes, you will be there some day. But Satan seemed to be thinking about something else, and said nothing. This made me feel ghastly, for I knew he had heard. Nothing spoken or unspoken ever escaped him. Poor Seppi looked distressed and did not finish his remark. The goblets rose and clove their way into the sky, a triplet of radiant sun-dogs, and disappeared. Why didn't they stay? It seemed a bad sign, and depressed me. Should I ever see mine again? Would Seppi ever see his?'